So this algebraic solution for the tutorial task two then, in the energy booklet, if we think about the plan that we came up with to do this, this is the tutorial question number two here, and that we wrote down all the information we were given, and then we've got to find the total work done, which is this formula here. So what I want to do is to start off with that formula and then put in the information, put in terms of the formula. So we've got that the work done equals the torque, the total torque, times the angle. That's the original formula. But we know that the total torque equals the applied torque plus the friction torque. So leaving it in terms of the symbols, we could write that. So now we need a formula for the applied torque. So look in our list of uh, formulae, look back at the plan, and if you remember, the formula for the applied torque was I, the moment of inertia, times alpha. And that's the angular equivalent of force equals mass times acceleration. So instead of the applied torque, we can write the work done equals the moment of inertia times alpha plus the friction torque, all multiplied by theta, leaving it in terms of the symbols that are involved. Carrying on, the work done equals, what's the formula for the moment of inertia? Little mk squared. What's the formula for the angular acceleration? Omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared all over theta, isn't it? Yeah, that one, omega 2 squared minus over 2 theta, okay? This last formula rearranged, yeah. So that's that, plus the friction torque, all times the angle. Okay. What's the advantage of writing the function like that? Because what we can now do is put in the values. We know the mass. We know the radius of gyration. We know omega 2. We know omega 1, that's 0. We know the angle, and we know the friction torque. So we know every value. We can plug those in now and calculate the work done. Is there an advantage to writing it like this, though? Helps with accuracy. We put all the numbers in one hit, all we're doing is rounding at the end. But the main advantage is that we've now got a function that we can plot on autograph or something like that, and we can see the effects of changing values without having to go through the whole calculation again. What happens if I change the mass? What happens if I change the uh, initial angular velocity or the final angular velocity? What happens if I change the friction force, what effect does that have on the overall work done? What I can do is, I can plot this function on autograph, and if we go to autograph, I've done that here. This is the function on autograph. So I've put this function into autograph, this function here. And I've gone a step further, actually. Instead of theta, I've put 2 pi n, where n is the number of revolutions that have travelled. So what I've actually plotted here is y, which represents the work done, equals 2 pi n, which is the number of revolutions, times mk squared um, times pi times x squared minus the initial velocity squared all over the number of turns plus the friction torque. So that's effectively what I put in there. 
I've played around with this equation and put 2 pi n in instead of theta. And when you do that, if I go back to here again, back to this, this function, and put in 2 pi n instead of theta, we actually do, can do some cancelling, and you can try and show how that's arrived at. Because omega is 2 pi f, theta is 2 pi n, so we've got pi appearing more than once, so we can do a bit of cancelling, which helps to simplify the function. But the bottom line is that we can put this function into autograph and see how the work done, this is the work, varies with, in this case, I've made omega 2 variable. I've made that x here. And so it's it's plotting the work done against the final angular velocity. And we can see that as I increase the final angular velocity of the flywheel, the work's increasing. And so at any at any angular velocity, I could see from here what the work done is. If it's rotating, so the final angular velocity is 10, that's the work done. If it's 20, that's the work done. For the given values that I've got, mass, for the given values for mass, uh, radius of gyration and friction torque. They're all constants within autograph. So if I go back to autograph and open up this constant controller, we can see that I put in the values for the mass, 125, for the radius of gyration, 0.15, for the number of revolutions, 500, as was in the question, for the friction torque, 2.5 newton meters, for the initial angular velocity is zero. So now what I can do is I can take any of those values and change them and see what effect that has on the curve. If I change the friction torque to 2.5 and maybe increase the friction torque, unsurprisingly, the amount of work done is going to increase because I'm increasing the friction torque. If I change the mass of the flywheel from 125 kilograms, increase it, or decrease it, I can see what effect that has on the work done, and so on. So, as an engineer, if you were asked to investigate this, you might well be looking for this solution, actually, um, here. The formula, so you can plot it, and then see how making changes affects the, the situation.